Change. You can change. Whatever you said, if you know five numbers, you give it, then your array is uh, a size five. Or you declare an array with a size five and uh, put the step later. Uh, but in both cases, you cannot change the size. You could only put two items, then what's going to happen? If you give only two items, your array is kind of wasted. So, 60% of the memory is waste. But you can go beyond. This is a limitation of, or a problem of the array. If you're declaring an array for students in a class, uh, maybe depends on the university, okay. Yeah, maybe 90 students sometimes. So you as a programmer, ask the company, university, how many students maximum are you going to have? Okay, sometimes we may have some class more than 100, like a seminar or something. Okay, put 200. Then you declare student array 200. Then most of the classes are only 70. Some classes only 10 students. Some internship may be five students. So if it is an internship class, you're wasting 195 memory space. That's a wages. Understand? That's a limitation. But we have a lot of other ways to solve it. That's not a part of Java 1. You can learn that next class. Okay. Yeah, here, you understand? Uh, two ways you could do. Now you could really pass my array to that. That is going to be uh, here. It's going to be 10, 20. You don't even have to change it. So this is hard coding, we should say, hard coding. Uh, this is uh, loading through for loop. But uh, you need it. So now you know how to create an array and pass to the method. And here you know how to return that method. Understand? Here you're returning just the minimum value or maximum value. Okay. Make sure you know the mechanism of the method, how to create method. Otherwise, you may end up typing everything in one main method. So your program go bigger and bigger, 200, 300, 400 lines. So usually people don't do that. You're going to divide and conquer and make a different method. You could do all this minimum and maximum in the within the main method. Main. Then display, then uh, look for the maximum and display. Everything will work. But then the problem, you put everything as a big mess in one method. So this way, you could give that max method to someone. They could also copy and paste and use it. So you don't have to do it again and again. That's a good thing about reusing. Now, returning array is another one. This is the syntax. Okay, that was about the methods. Now, we went through all this. Yes? Examples? Exercise? Mark? Oh, no, we didn't go through this. Okay. Okay, this is, I told you. Uh, there is a yeah in the API um, you type math go to math class math class is a class with a lot of uh, methods two two fields see who created the math class How do you going to draw the UML diagram for this math class? UML diagram. Okay, what do I put here? Huh? Math. Math, yeah, that's the name of the class, see? Math. You don't have to because it's done already. 
what do I put here? Yeah, here it's private. Yeah. Yeah, what do I put here? How many how many attributes or variables are here in math class? It's in the screen. How many there? How many? Two. What is that? E and pi. That's it. How many methods? Maybe a lot. <laughs> Apps, everything is plus. Okay? Plus all of them are static too. See, everything is static. That is the reason. That's the reason you could really say math dot absolute 4.5%. Okay? If you don't have the static keyword, what you supposed to do is you have to say math my math equals new math. See that? Then my math dot apps 4.5. Is this make any sense? So there is no math for just me. Everybody in the world use the same math. So since it's available to everybody globally, you don't have to let each user create their own math and get objects. That's kind of, doesn't make any sense. That's why they make everything in static. But when you create the employee class, uh, you can do like that because the name of the employee is not same for everybody. Somebody use your employee class for a bank or a school uh, or a business apps. All this method, no big deal. Seal and floor. What's the difference between seal and floor? Yes, yeah, seal is going to uh, see. Let's run the program. Seal is going to uh, the ceiling. Ceiling of this. This is what? First floor? Yeah, first floor. So this is the second floor. So our seal is the second floor. Our floor is the first floor. See? Mm -hmm. That's it. Uh, so if uh, this position may be like uh, first floor. Uh, four feet high. So you could say 1.4. What is the floor of 1.4? What is the seal of 1.4? Two. So you go to the next. Understand? Seal means go to the next round number. Floor means go to the, uh, the, uh, the highest uh, below. So 8.9 floor is going to be? Eight. eight. A seal is going to be nine. nine. If it's a round, what is going to be eight point nine round? Nine. Nine. If it's eight point four, what is round? Eight. Eight. So that's a regular math, you know. Okay. So that's what round floor. You may get questions from uh, uh, floor, round, all that stuff. Even math comes with the max method and min method. See, we type that for no reason. So if you're smart, you go there. Why should I really put that for to there is a method. They will do it. Man. So that's it. There is a power. Two square, three square, sine, square root, tan, all this stuff is there. Uh, so when you run the program, uh, they're going to show you. See, floor of minus 9.8 is uh, going to ten just floor of nine point two go to this. So when it come to minus go to okay. Understand? Because minus is going down. 
uh, what is the seal? Seal is e sealing is going to the next round. You understand? Oh. Remember that? Sphere. What is that? Okay. I have a program here. Uh, you're getting the radius of a sphere. Then you call the method. Sphere volume. Line number 17. This method is going to have an input, which is a double, and an output, which is also double. And it's static, so you do not have to create an output that make your job easy. Understand? Then the radius will come. If you put five, uh, the volume is going to be four divided by three, so that's the way it is. Uh, mark that five, so three, four, Mark that's the equation, isn't it? Volume of the sphere by R cube. See that? So V equals by R cube. That's the equation, isn't it? Yeah. Got it. It's the radius you're going to put there by R square, isn't it? I mean, radius, volume, um, area, area. Okay. So you go here. You're going to use the dot pi. That's a field which is here. Pi. Again, it's available to you because it's tiny. You could get mark dot pi. Otherwise, you have to say my mark dot pi. This node put what pi. Okay, yeah, that's what happening here. Uh, then uh, mark that P or W forward. So both is going to do the job. Both are going to help. Yeah, radius of the sphere. Let's put five. Then area is 520 volume. It's uh, volume, no range, sphere. Just like it. So what you have to learn is how to build a method. That's it. Method. That's top and we did. We got six step method. Overloading, we went through that, remember? Yeah. Overload means you could have a method with the same name. Okay, here, square is a, a method uh, which receives integer value and return integer value. Another square, same name, receives double value and return double value. So you could have a both. So you could use a method for integer squaring and uh, double squaring and float squaring and a long different data type you could square. See that? When I put comma and control space, I think so. Then they're going to list what are the options. Did you see two square there? In the list, square. Both look same. Both square. Then you say, yeah, first one is taking integer, second one is taking double, and first one is returning integer. See the Right side column is INT, mm -hmm. double. So pick which one you want. That's the question. That's it. So it looks like we covered everything. And uh, I even have more example, chapter six, some, yeah, sample program, that's it. So you have to download that and extract that then move it to your ID, uh, like, uh, see, leave it here, and then open the folder, 
in my case, I have okay, so the class. See, I have the folder, I have the chapter six, I have open it, then uh, uh, so I just uh, do like that. I could even select all of them and control and click and drag. Make sure you put it in the SR. See, then oh, they're going to create all this one. Or you could do one by one. That's where they're creating. See, some of them I did, they created. You can drag. That's the easy way you don't make any mistake. But if you double click, it's no good to work. If you double click in my setup, it goes to not bad. If you have a default opening in ID, it may go here. Sometimes when you double click on the file, it will open here. Just as a file, it's no good. Understand? Yeah. So, any questions? Any questions? Okay. No, that means, yeah, use that. That's your weekend uh, job. Go through all the examples. That's the best way to learn. I posted all this extra example here, see? And PowerPoint. Then, uh, exam one review is here. Okay, when is exam one? February 28. Exam one review. Uh, yeah. Go through this with the solution. Some questions. So your questions may uh, is going to be something like this. Most of the coding questions you should know code to answer. Yeah. So, lab two, any class is still the same basic? Uh, lab two, yeah, you could finish the lab already, yeah. Okay. Yeah, uh, <laughs> yeah. that was your question? Same. Let me see if I could change the date, I don't mind. Let me see. Uh, lab two, Lab two. Oh, you want it before or after? After. 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 Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Then we could have more materials coming, you know? We do, yeah. So we could do that. February 30 or something, you know? How about a week after? Okay. Second is good. Let's do a week after. The, the point is this. Huh? The week is this. Okay. Is <laughs> then the problem is, yeah, this lab to March, April, May. Yeah. Okay. Then you may have the next lab coming soon. That's your problem. Okay? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Sadly, okay? That's a lot of time. Yeah. Next lab, um, yeah, that's maybe it's going to be very close. That that's the problem, you know. When you when I extend this, you may have another lab coming soon. Yeah, but I don't want the same day with the exam. That that's lab two, lab three is I didn't put the date. Yeah, yeah, I don't think it's going to be too far. Maybe How many total eight. labs are there going to be? How many total labs are there? Uh, going to be? Five, 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 okay. five labs. Okay. Not bad. Uh, so go through. Uh, yeah, next. Next class, I will go through exam one review. Again, if you don't understand any of this question, you could pause, you could bother your TA. Uh, then we have to do something, you know? You could pause some questions. 